What's up guys, Coding Jesus here. Guys, in today's video, I want to talk about a topic in the world of quant trading that often gets overlooked when it comes to preparing for technical interviews. Now, a lot of you guys know you need to brush up on your data structures and algorithms. Any quant firm to kind of screen you at the beginning is either going to give you a take-home assignment or some sort of like online lead code-like assessment, for example, a hacker rank. Now, most of the time, these hacker rank questions are very much lead code-like questions, and so you need to brush up on your lead code. Now, that means that a lot of people really focus on the algorithms part of DSA, but they don't really focus on the data structures part. Yes, they might have memorized time complexities. Yes, they might know the APIs on certain uh, you know, data structures like map, unordered map, list, vector, etc. but they don't actually know how to implement these data structures. And as a result, they don't know the internal workings of these data structures, and so they can't answer questions like, are iterators on lists ever invalidated? Or what does it mean to reserve memory in a vector? Or what does it mean to expand that memory? When is that memory expanded? Uh, and how much more is memory is allocated by vector when its capacity has been breached, for example. So these are all questions that you can really only truly understand once you've gone ahead and implemented these data structures. And that's the real point of this video. I have a list of a dozen data structures and algorithms that I've implemented with working code available on my Patreon for patrons that are interested in, or you can, I guess, just buy it outright if you like on my Patreon on my patron shop in the description box below. But in today's video, I wanted to go over just one implementation that I made in order to show you guys how I've been practicing for interviews. This is the implementation of a class called Vector. Now, is it a bulletproof gold implementation that includes every single method on CPP reference? No, it's not because they're not gonna be asking you to do that in a half an hour to an hour interview. They're gonna be asking you to implement the key APIs on these classes just to get a general feel to see if you even understand what's going on. All right, if you can't implement vector pushback, for example, you're probably not gonna be able to implement vector clear and place back, reserve, etc. So let's go ahead and actually take a look at one of the implementations that's available on my Patreon or for purchase. We're gonna take a look at vector because it's a very common interview question. I was actually asked this in a 2023 interview to implement vectors pushback. So let's go ahead and take a look. Alrighty, on my screen, you can see exactly that. So we have vector. Now, I decided to give vector T element type, um, and I'll actually also use an allocator. The reason we're using an allocator here, guys, is because they want to see whether or not you understand how vector works under the hood. Vector essentially has a size, capacity, and data field, and vector creates objects in two, in two steps. Effectively, it allocates memory first, and then it copy constructs the item you're trying to push back into that slot in memory. Let's take a look at some of my public APIs here. I have vector that takes an account of the amount of items I want to create and the item. So it creates item count times. I also take in a initializer list of items. I didn't implement any of these, but I will implement destructor later to show you guys how I think through my implementation. Then we have some of the key APIs, reserve, pushback, and placeback, clear size, capacity, get allocator, data. How do you know which APIs to implement? Effectively go on cppreference.com before any interview and essentially go through all the APIs so you have a good understanding of the APIs that exist on these classes. Okay, let's take a look first at our actual private data members before we look at the implementation. Private data members, oh, I think I passed it. Yeah, three things, size, capacity, and a pointer to data. That's all you need. The standard vector implementation is 24 bytes in size. This implementation is also 24 bytes in size because there's three data members here and each one of them is eight bytes. At least on 64-bit architecture, this pointer is gonna be eight bytes. Okay, and size T. Now let's take a look at the implementation. Let's start with the easy stuff, the constructor. So let's go ahead and scroll. So we have our constructor here, taking count and item. The first thing I do is I call reserve to reserve X amount of memory blocks. And then I, all I do is I call pushback on the same item, count times. Simple, straightforward. Next one, the initializer list constructor. I call reserve with the size of the initializer list, and then I iterate over its items, and I just call pushback. Very similar to this, okay? Now let's take a look at reserve because this is where the bulk of the heavy lifting is going to be. Essentially, when you reserve, what you're saying is, I want to get a contiguous portion of memory of X size. So what do I do? I say, well, if our new, new requested capacity is less than our current capacity, then return. If our current capacity is four and somebody wants a vector of two capacity, return. 
I believe there is another API called like shrink to size or shrink to fit that effectively allows you to decrease the capacity of a vector, but that's beyond the scope of this implementation. The next thing I do with this new capacity is I allocate memory for a given chunk of this size. The next thing I do is I say, well, if there is any data, if our data pointer doesn't point to null pointer, effectively what I want to do is I want to copy construct our items in the previous chunk of contiguous memory into our new chunk. And after I do that, I want to destroy the items that existed in the previous chunk and then deallocate the previous chunk. Why is this pushback impl or reserve implement why is this reserve implementation important? It's important because it shows the interviewer that you understand how the inner workings of a vector works. That it first allocates memory and then it constructs the objects in place before deconstructing the objects that existed previously and deallocating the previous chunk of memory. Hopefully that makes sense. Once that's done, we can update our internal state with our new capacity and our new allocated memory, which includes our copy constructed items. So effectively in this new chunk of allocated memory, we have X units available to construct in this memory. And we have Y units that have already been constructed. So we have X minus Y slots available for new items to be pushed into. Okay, then we have pushback. Pushback calls try and expand capacity. And then once this is done, we are guaranteed to have capacity for our next item. So we just emplacement new copy construct of that item into that slot of memory, which has already been allocated. Let's look, take a look at try expand capacity. Try expand capacity, very simple call. If our size is equal to our capacity, what we want to do is we want to reserve. If our capacity is zero, we want to reserve one. Otherwise we want to double our capacity. Different compilers implementation of vector expands capacity differently. The standard is usually just like t times two. So if we had four, we're going to be at eight. If we had eight, we're going to 16, etc. I think MSVC does times 1.5. Um, somebody that's smarter than me can correct me in the comments down below. Okay. Uh, and place back. And placeback is very similar. It takes in the arguments and it forwards these arguments to T's constructor. Okay, so in placeback doesn't require copy a copy constructor. It requires a default or not a not a default constructor. A default constructor doesn't take any arguments or contains defaulted arguments. It requires a constructor effectively. Now let's take a look at the clear method. What does a clear method do? What the clear method does is it doesn't deallocate memory, but it destroys the objects already contained within allocated memory. So I say, if we don't have any data, then there's nothing to do. Otherwise, what we want to do is for every item that we have in our allocated contiguous array of memory, we want to destruct it and then set our size to zero, signaling that all the items that do exist in this memory, in this allocated memory, are no longer there. They're destroyed. Okay. As you can see, um, our vector is 24 bytes and the actual implementation of std vector for int is also 24 bytes. So we know that we are efficient with our uh, memory. We're not using more memory than per se the std uh, vector would. Now let's actually think through how we would maybe implement the destructor together. So let's go ahead and do that. So vector and let's, let's scroll, okay, before I scroll down, these are just very simple getters, in case you haven't seen them. Uh, let's scroll down to create a destructor. So for our destructor, we'll say template t, we'll say vector t allocator vector, and we will do this. We will say, well, if there's no data, return. Otherwise, let's call clear. So let's leverage our existing code. Let's not repeat ourselves. And once we know we've destroyed all the items in that array, we can go ahead and do allocator and we can now deallocate the actual memory. And that would really be it for a destructor. Now guys, you're going to notice something else that I did here. I have some comments here. Why? Because during the interview, you might not be able to fully 
vocalize what you're thinking. So what I like to do is I like to write comments so the interviewer can read what I'm thinking if you're not that great at vocalizing. And also, effectively, what I notice is that a lot of developers don't write enough comments. And there's that saying that goes something along the lines of, in the kingdom of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So the kingdom of the blind is effectively equivalent to most software engineers not writing any comments. So even if you write just some comments, describing the thought process, it'll really help distinguish or um, highlight your skill set and show that you know what you're doing. Okay, that's it really for this implementation. I hope you guys got a really good understanding of what you'd be expected to implement in an actual DSA lead code like technical that focuses more on the data structure side as opposed to the lead code algorithm side. Um, I have an implementation for things like mutex, thread pool, uh, list, unordered map. I have over like, I think over a dozen implementations. So if you'd like access to that patron or patron shop link in the description box below. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to message me, you can do so at thecodingjesus at codingjesus.com. If you want a one-on-one -on -one resume review, etc., you can do so by going to my Calendly link in the description box below. And if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, for example, I don't answer any quant-related stuff there, but if you'd like to follow me, thecodingjesus at codingjesus. Uh, thecodingjesus. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.